guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna start off with a little perennial unboxing. We have a shipment that's due to arrive any minute. I thought we could uncrate the plants together, take a look at what we've got. I first need to do some organizing in here. So I'm sort of glad that they're not here quite yet. I'm just gonna shift some plants around so we've got lots of room. We already have lots of room, <laughs> but I would like to move uh, the stuff that's in here maybe toward that end so that we can line stuff up on these tables. We've got a few projects that these plants are sort of allocated for depending on how everything goes and how they fit in. But the biggest one is of course the dream stream. We are really amping up the amount of plants we have right now so that we've got a lot to choose from depending on how that forms up. We've also got some perennials coming for containers and then there are several hibiscus that I would like to dot around the border here in the dirtlands. So I'm just going to shift stuff around a little bit in preparation and all of this stuff including the whole high tunnel they're going to move probably in the next week or so. We're going to be putting the high tunnels up back by the red barn that spot is almost ready so yeah we'll be picking these plants up again and moving them but at least they'll be protected and undercover for now. Oh you know what here comes Paul with the first crate. I think he met the truck all the way out on the lane or the main road rather. Well, I guess we'll just have to organize and shift as we go. I can already see some beautiful grasses on the top. Looks like we've got a three layer palette. I think there's three palettes that we are gonna be unboxing today. Oh, -ho. oh you guys. Oh, there's sedum in there that's beautiful. Look at the hookerellas. I'm seeing that some of these grasses look a little dry. Oh yeah, they need a drink. Okay, so we're just going to unbox all of these things, line them up, and then we'll do a little tour. So excited. bursting at the seams. It's so exciting to see this high tunnel full of fresh plants. Usually about by the end of summer or by the end of August at least, I'm usually feeling pretty weary of the heat and I want a little bit of a break and I want to see the high tunnel empty, but you get into like toward the end of September when it's starting to feel consistently cooler. I and mean, this morning I was walking around with my coffee. It was 50 degrees outside. There was just a little bit of chill in the air. It felt really good. It makes me feel more energetic again. It makes me want to be out here again. So to see all of these gorgeous plants and to know that we have such fun projects coming up to use them in, oh, I just love it. So let's do a walkthrough 
I'll show you all the different varieties in here. And then I think I would like to tackle planting some of the hibiscus. But we are gonna start on this end and just kind of mosey our way down. First off, we've got the Cat's Pajamas Nepeta. This one I got specifically for the pond area because it's got a little bit more of a natural look to it and it provides a ton of color through the season and it doesn't get big. So this will be great, you know, uh, around the base of boulders and that sort of thing, as will these. And these are new for next year. These are Campanula. Uh, ground cover campanulas and we have planted some of these already but we'll add in some more so we've got the star bright which is white and we've got midnight which is the deep it's not deep deep but it's a darker purple at least darker than this one which is the twilight and you've got a little bit more kind of creamy white mixed in with that purple okay then we've got a couple of things that i already had the sakibia it's a chocolate vine i think i know where i'm going to put this i think we've got some of the oh so easy ice bay roses and then we've got some of the opalescence phlox, the luminary opalescence. This is one of my, well, I'd have to say this is my favorite variety of phlox in terms of how it performs and the color is gorgeous. We have this behind a boxwood hedge and I've showed it to you in videos before. It gets like, I don't know, 30 inches tall, 30 to 32 inches tall. It's perfect. It never flops. It never gets powdery mildew. It is in color, some sort of color all season long. I got this one to plant out in the South Garden because I just, I want more of that color out there. And then we have these U's for another project. We've got some Lemon Squeeze Penicetum, which is a fantastic perennial grass. They get these big, beautiful plumes. We've got mature specimens out in the South Garden that I've shown you that are, they're just amazing. About 36 inches tall, a little bit wider than that. And they've got this kind of chartreuse well, lemon, lemony green color to their leaves. And then all right here, we've got three different varieties of hibiscus. We have got Candy Crush, which just a vibrant pink and very prolific bloomer. We've got Berry Awesome, which right here, you can see that this one's just barely opening up, but they get massive flowers. And then let me find a tag for the third variety. Here we go. Perfect Storm, which is kind of a pink white blend. And that's what those two and then all of these are. And these are some of the ones I want to get planted today. So we don't miss these. I did get some Pure Joy Sedum, which this is sort of becoming one of my favorite sedums. Ours out in the landscape just looks perfect, like little clouds lining a stone pathway. I just think they're gorgeous. You can see the color when it's a little bit more in its prime for blooms. There's a ton of buds though on it right now, but about a foot tall and almost two foot spread. And I just like the dome effect that they bring. And then there's the Firefly Fuchsia Yarrow, which I thought Yarrow would be perfect to use in a mountainy stream sort of situation. We do have a native Yarrow that's kind of a noxious weed. It's a white Yarrow. So you see that kind of foliage everywhere around here. So it fits in really well, even though it's kind of a brighter color, I think it's just going to be really pretty. And we did plant some of this out in the South Garden, and I think I've got enough to pop out there as well. Okay, then some of the things I already had in here, the hostas are new. They've, they've kind of seen better days, I have to say, but I am excited about these. It's a little bit of a bigger leaf. I had just never heard of this variety, so I thought we should try it. Gigantosaurus. The tag shows it looking a little better, but this one gets real wide, 78 inches, a little over six feet. I think that's gonna be really cool. We usually don't, well, I, I can't say that we usually don't have our hostas get big because our Empress Wu and Wu La La's were the biggest, most beautiful they have ever been this last spring. And they're still looking pretty good even at the end of the season. Usually by this time, we've had to groom about half the plant off of them and they're looking a little meager, which is the rest of our hostas around the garden. But those have done real well. So I'm excited to try this variety. And then the rest of this, and all of these are the hopscotch hookerella. And I've got a bigger project in mind for, of course, all of these. There's 30 of them. So 10 to 12 inches tall, two foot spread. The hookerellas tend to do better at coming back for us. They just are a little bit more sturdy. And I love the autumn tone of the leaves. I just think they're just gorgeous. Zone four through nine. And then I already ran through some of these things I already had, the Weeping Norway Spruce. And then we had a few of these things already in here. <gasps> Look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? gorgeous. This is an aster. It's called Totally Stoked Riptide. It's a Stokes aster, which we do have uh, some Stokes asters on the west side in the flower bed, but they're different than this. I love the leaf. Look at this. It's just such an interesting blend here. They get, oh, roughly like two feet, maybe a little more tall, and then about 30, 30 to 36 inches wide or so, and they bloom from early through late summer. And I just think the blooms are gorgeous. And if this is how they're gonna bloom on these long stalks. 
These will be awesome for cutting too. I don't know about their vase life, but they are wonderful looking. And we've also got some of the cotton candy meadow rue, which we planted earlier this season. It's a new variety, I think for next year. I love the leaf structure. It almost looks like a columbine, but it gets these tall stalks that have these very flossy looking, like very cotton candy-ish looking light lavender, light pinkish blooms. And the ones we planted have been doing well. We've got the Prairie Rose Panicum right here. Four feet tall, I think. Yep, 40 in inches tall by 30 inches wide. It looks like a little bit more of a, of a dainty version of the Niagara Falls. Like the leaves aren't quite as wide and it doesn't get quite as wide in its growth habit. So pretty though, look at this. Oh, that movement right there totally great for a stream area. Okay, moving this way, we've got the uh, Cheyenne Sky Panicum right here, which they have a little bit more red in the leaves. Uh, these were struggling for water. <laughs> Look at this one. Um, so I'm hoping these were for a bigger project, so I'm hoping that we have some rebound. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to tuck that one toward the back. But these stay a little bit smaller than the Prairie Rose. I love the fall color on them though. That's the whole reason why I was gonna use these in the project because of that fall, the fall tones. Look at that beautiful red and orange. And then the back in black sedum. Oh, I mean, when you just look at this row right here, the beautiful grassy texture with the depth of color there, the bright chartreuse, it's just, oh, it's gorgeous. So these wanna grow about two feet tall and about that wide. And you can see that their blooms, like these are, hmm, let's see, they're almost done blooming. Well, no, that's not true. <laughs> There's some buds right here, but you can see they usually have like a little bit more of a white petal and then kind of a red center, but it makes them look overall kind of a pinky color when they're in peak bloom. I just love the leaf color on that one. Then we have got the ball gown hookera. So hookerella are usually a little more reliable for us than hookera, but this hookera has proven itself to be a very reliable variety. We have some in other areas of the garden that have come back for two seasons in a row, stronger than they were the season before, just as bright. In fact, the ones we have don't even have like the stress. You can see the stress on the leaves here, which is typical of a plant in a container that's made it through the whole season. You know, it's a lot for a plant to have to take all the heat and stuff and only have this much soil around it. So I am thrilled to plant more of these. And this is another variety of hookah that has been very productive and very reliable. This is called spearmint and they get these tall stalks of kind of like bright pink blooms. But the leaf canopy itself doesn't get really huge, like eight to 10 inches, and then the bloom stalks come up from that. Then we've got some of the rose rhinestones, penstemon. What's the variety we just planted by the pond? They've got a couple new varieties of penstemon coming out. Was it this one? I can't remember, I'll have to look it up. But whichever variety it is, it's gorgeous and it's blooming again right now. The plants just, they look awesome. So I'm excited about this. Penstemon are also a very um, meadowy sort of flower to have. So these will probably go by the dream stream. We've also got some of the firefly sunshine yarrow to mix in, just that bright sunshiny yellow color. And there's some more of the fuchsia. Oh, I could not be more thrilled with all of these plants. So now we're gonna load up some of these hibiscus, which Aaron is gonna be so thrilled in particular. He loves these, just the amount of color they bring. And I do too. Too. Hibiscus have been a plant that has kind of had to grow on me. It was the first plant I picked out to put in a container after Erin and I got married and we had our own apartment. We had one big container on our driveway and I picked out a bright red hibiscus, but it wasn't like these varieties. These newer varieties, they get full, they're not sparse, they're full of color all summer long, but the older varieties, those of you who have grown those before, you know, they're sparse. They just, they look kind of weedy almost. And so after I planted that one, I was like, ooh, I don't like this very much. And so I went for years just not caring for hibiscus at all until I started planting some of these newer varieties. And they just are so low maintenance. They do not want very much from me and they provide a ton of color. And we thought that that would be the perfect type of plant to pop in the dirt lands for some extra color along with our trees and other shrubs. We're not gonna go heavy on perennials or anything like that out here, but this type of perennial where all you have to do in the year is cut the plant back to the ground, that's it. Once a year, that's all you do with it. I can get behind that, especially for what they bring. We've got 15 of them. You think we can get 15 planted this afternoon? We'll see.
Got them loaded up. We're out here in the dirt lands and I did want to show you the evening rose hibiscus that we dug out of the south garden early this spring and moved out here. I tried to get as big a root ball as I could but the soil was wet. So it was very, very heavy and I thought, oh my goodness, I don't know how this is going to transplant. Yeah, it didn't mind it. This is exactly why we want to plant this sort of thing out here. The evening rose has the really dark colored leaves with the high contrast, super bright colored flowers. It's lulled out a little bit in bloom with the recent cold front that came through, but it's full of buds. So we're going to have another huge bloom show here really, really soon, but they just take up a good amount of space while being super low maintenance and providing color. And you can't ask for much more out of a plant than that. It's amazing. Okay, now I'm looking at this trailer. Some of these look so wilted. I gave them all water. What in the world? Yeah, that does not look happy at all, does it? We just need to get these in the ground. So we've got the three varieties, five of each, and I sort of want to keep them in close proximity. I don't want like to scatter all the varieties out all over the place, kind of like we did with the forsythias over here. We had 10 of the show off forsythias in our pots along the east side this spring. So I brought five of them right to this area and five in another location. And I think we're gonna have an amazing show from these this next spring. But this is kind of what I'm thinking with the hibiscus, just kind of clustering them sort of close together, maybe not this close together. Out here, the big stuff is really easy to place at this point, but placing things that stay just a little bit smaller is a little bit more difficult. Thankfully, the lane is in, so we know our boundary areas. You can see I'm driving on gravel right now. So we have planting area on both sides. Right when we turn the corner here, We'll have planting area right in this space, but this is going to be, we're going to have an open bay shed structure right in here to put palletized stuff. So we'll have this kind of graveled and open. Of course, one day we'll have a horse barn right out in here. I'm thinking a few of them, we should start on that side. You know what, maybe we should put a few right in here too. Let's do that. back up <laughs> this soil is so hard it's like I'm trying to dig into concrete Well, we ended up planting 10 out of 15. So we've got five more to plant, but my word, the soil is so hard out here. You know, we don't irrigate anything except for, you know, what we on purpose plant. So the soil was just really dry. I ended up having to ask Aaron for some help because I just could not get the holes dug. I just, uh, yeah, it was really tough. But I think these are gonna look really pretty. They look super sad right now, but they are moist. The root balls were when I put them in and um, I watered everything in, of course, today. Uh, these five and then the other five are right over there. We'll head over there in just a second. 
but I think that this is gonna be pretty. So these I did plant in close proximity to one another. The others I spread out a little bit further. So we'll just see what we end up liking more. This is the Berry Awesome variety. So we'll have a nice deep green leaf with a bright pink flower. And I think like when you come in on the other side, it'll really draw your eye to this area. And the wonderful part about these plants, if you have an area like this, that the soil is so hard that you feel like you're putting the root ball down into a tomb because like nothing is getting through that soil, you know, the water is going to kind of sit there because it's not going to, um, I mean, it will after a while, it will permeate the soil around it and the soil will soften, but it tends to hold on to the moisture around the plants a little bit more than in other areas. But these plants could live in a bog and be happy. So they're just a really like, kind of a problem solver plant. If you've got a super sunny area, but it's a really tough soil area that stays moist or it's a really tough soil for drainage, this plant is a good option for that kind of spot. Okay, we're gonna off-road it a little bit here. This T-post indicates one of the back paddock corners and then it'll go right through here. So this is planting bed that we're driving through right now. Nice deep border right here. Oh, this gravel lane is so nice. This area already looks better because it's all mulched up, but we've got one here and then two, three, four, five. And they're just spaced a little bit further away from each other. This is the Candy Crush variety, which we have another one right up by the Hartley. Maybe we'll go check that one out. But you can see that these are kind of a little bit of a trio and then we've got the two over here. Candy Crush gets just slightly bigger than the Berry Awesome. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five. And hibiscus, if you've never grown them before, they are very late to break dormancy. Every year, I remember down at the garden center, we'd have people come in and say, I planted a hibiscus last year and it died. And I would tell them, just wait. <laughs> wait another month or two and you will see it break dormancy because you know everything else is breaking dormancy in end of march and april and hibiscus typically we don't see them come out until sometime in may wilted today but they will be fine and they will be gorgeous out here here's the candy crush isn't that gorgeous it's not a super old plant in fact i thought it got plowed under when we excavated the area to put in the hartley and it didn't it just kind of came I mean magically appeared one day uh, and it's just done really well ever since and then right here behind the chicken coop we've got the berry awesome which I planted several years ago there's a honeybee completely covered in pollen in this one how funny here it comes oh my word looks like it was bathing in it how funny Anyway, these hibiscus probably need to be removed and maybe taken out to the dirt lands because it's gotten so thick in here. We have a crab apple. There's um, baptisia in here. This whole space needs an overhaul. Not this year. <laughs> That's a good project for next spring. We need to readdress the drip tubing in that area anyway. So it'd be a good time to kind of clean it out, move some stuff around. But I just wanted to show you a couple examples of hibiscus that aren't all wilted. <laughs> like the ones we just planted and then the perfect storm right here we will plant another day so anyway guys that is going to do it for today beautiful perennials i'm so excited about it this whole area is just about ready to transform so hugely i just i am so excited and then it's nice to get some hibiscus in the ground in the dirt lands because then we get to look forward to that for next year uh, we get to look forward to there being some color already there so anyway thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video bye